Yes, and this is morning, Wednesday, the 10th of July. Of course, it's going to be business and market day, but if you ask every average Nigerian at this moment, the mind is at 8 p.m. already, and they can't wait to get in front of television sets for Nigeria's playing South Africa in the finals of AFCON 2019. So that's a big story, and it's a lot of money as well. So I'm sure you folks spare some time to listen to this quarterfinals uh, being played uh, today. But again, we need to, to get through these quarterfinals and then we'll be heading to the final lap. But this is the beginning of the end of AFCON 2019. So this is one big story. And uh, whatever you're doing tonight is uh, a dinner time football match. Uh, I'll try to keep one eye on that. Meantime, you need to keep your two eyes open. How? If you are flying across Nigeria's, into Nigeria's airports, reports of rising incidents of luggage pilfering at Nigeria's local and international airports by workers yet to be identified, arrested, and prosecuted. Flyers are reporting missing cash and other valuables frequently at both Lagos and Abuja airports, especially during early morning and late night flights. We need to let you have this. If you are on social media, uh, on Twitter over the last couple of days, you've seen a number of folks reporting very uh, daring incidents of cash and other valuables being pilfered, even when your luggage is secured with a padlock. Uh, what I call the airport rats are still in business. So let's talk about Nigeria's tax industry. The country's tax appeal tribunal says a total of uh, 42 dispute cases worth 288 0.1 billion naira and 5.41 billion dollars have been resolved since the inauguration of the new appeal tribunal that was in November of last year. So let's get you a few fast facts of uh, what has been uh, achieved so far. Just uh, I bring this to your uh, attention, so breaking it down for you to understand what has been achieved in the last eight months. The tribunal says it inherited, uh, inherited a total of 215 tax appeals, that is between the FRS and other uh, state agencies and the companies or individuals involved, total of 215, uh, but says uh, total, those appeals were worth 607.53 billion naira, 13.52 uh, billion dollars, and 19.5 million US dollars. If you're fast with figures, uh, do me a quick uh, uh, tweet and give me the net naira, uh, a total of that. Uh, if you add 607.53 billion naira to 13.52 billion naira, if you use a, uh, even if you use a, a bit more conservative central bank uh, figure, and 19.5 million euros, I'm sure, will be coming to some figures well above a trillion naira lockdown in tax appeals. That's big money Nigeria could use. So, how much has been done? Uh, the uh, tribunal says a uh, total uh, cases of 42 have been resolved. And that was to 88.1 billion naira in local currency and another 5.41 billion dollars in, in, um, uh, in, in foreign currency. Then uh, 66 appeals have been struck out, and that's for 22.03 billion naira and 1.06 uh, billion US dollars. So, um, what do we have as a total pending of uh, tax appeals? 165. So. About 100 or so have been cleared within eight months. Those total tax appeals uh, currently pending are worth 309.8 billion naira, 10.21 billion US dollars, and 1.407 million euros. Uh, some of these are uh, pending cases for judgment awaiting filing of set terms of settlement. Uh, that's a total of 31, uh, which is still awaiting uh, a judgment or settlement of uh, or terms of settlement between the parties. Uh, that's but just a summary there for you, where we are with the tax uh, appeal uh, tribunal. Uh, a, a very good job being done within the last eight months since the new tribunal was inaugurated, uh, trying to resolve some of those uh, naughty cases in Nigeria's uh, tax uh, industry. So that's it. So let's talk about the agri sector. Nigeria's palm oil producers tell the federal government to stop the rising cases of smuggling of finished palm oil and other products that are not eligible for FX. According to the group, they're asking the Central Bank of Nigeria to provide them with credit at 2% interest rate with a moratorium of at least seven years. The Palm Oil Producers Association of Nigeria says 
I don't want to let the presidency know that it is not the importation of palm oil that is the problem. So what's the problem? Well, they say the point is the unrestricted flow of CPO, refined vegetable oil, and fats. And that's what I told uh, the authorities on Tuesday. This week, the central bank announced a new poultry subsector intervention program in partnership with Nigerian universities, uh, looking to stem the inflow of poultry largely on fit for consumption, raise local output of poultry, create jobs, and save for in exchange. In the last few years, how much has the central bank done? Uh, how in part of the sectors, the agriculture, subset of agriculture that the central bank had intervened? If you are uh, counting, this is just in summary. Rice uh, was the, the uh, anchor borrowers program, which was the headline um, uh, subsector that the central bank faced with Kebby State and a few other states across the country. That was the anchor borrowers. It's the largest of the agri sector focused by the central bank. Then you have cotton, which uh, uh, came into the, onto the table of the CBN in the last few months looking to revive Nigeria's textile subsector. So interventions with some states in the northern part of the country to grow cotton with some form of intervention, a.k.a. subsidy, to the cotton farmers in terms of seed and other things. Then you have palm oil, which has uh, been on the 41 item uh, for a few years ago. Then, of course, now a poultry is being added to that. The central bank believes these are areas, low-hanging fruits in which Nigeria has competitive advantage to save billions of dollars of the country's cost effects, grow jobs, and increase domestic production. Okay, what do we have left? Yeah, left, I think we have the stock market. Yes, so we got Airtel yesterday, 4.4 billion US dollars added to the market capitalization of the Nigerian stock market. So that took our total market cap to 14.28 trillion Naira. The share price went maximum 10% on the day of listing. Temple Ashaju uh, saw it all yesterday and uh, is taking us uh, through the market briefing. Then we'll talk about the Airtel listing in a few minutes. Good morning, Temple. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank Great. You uh, Temple, let's, let's get through the, uh, the market numbers first, then, then we'll spend some few minutes to talk about the Airtel listing. So, well, thanks to Airtel uh, again. We were actually off yesterday. Yesterday, we would have lost uh, some 100 business points plus in the market given the negative sentiments that permeated the market. Because if you go through the sectoral performances of the market yesterday, all of those sectors were really negative. We had uh, some just uh, some 20 losers plus in the market uh, against uh, just nine gainers in the system. Uh, towards the close of the market, we saw some 100,000 uh, units of Airtel shares, you know, that went on rally and that shut off that performance by some 10% uh, in the market. And that's why we were able to gain some 1.38 trillion naira in the market yesterday, which gave us the 14.28 trillion naira that we now have in equity capitalization. All share index. Uh, moderated eventually at some 0.11%, and of course that's 29,318.85. If we go through the activities uh, of the market, activity level of the market, uh, we got volume at 291.53 million. We got value of that transaction at 3.11 billion naira, and of course the deal is 3,957, close to uh, 4,000. Uh, deals in, there in total. Uh, if we then look at the sectoral performances, things were really negative. The banking sector was down, consumer goods was down, industrial goods was down, insurance sector was down, and of course the oil and gas side of things was also down. Just a few companies actually helped the market yesterday uh, in terms of equities. Cadbury was up, uh, then Gode Flower, Nigerian Brewery, CCN, and FCMB, and Sambi Kaibetusi, and of course, ultimately, Airtel. In terms of the NASD OTC, where things uh, was a bit bearish. Uh, we saw a 1.21% decline in the performance of the market yesterday. That's the unlisted security side of the market. Some 6.51 million naira was lost on the equity capital or the cap, market cap of this market yesterday. As the uh, uh, the market capitalization set to the 5. Uh, 533.06 billion naira. Uh, we saw Kappa Delberto, uh, PSPS, Wamco, NDEP, the Niger Delta Exploration uh, Production Company, uh, seeing some four deals there, and of course uh, Union Bank uh, 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 rates, uh, which also uh, Union Bank properties, a bigger pardon, which experienced one deal there in the market. In total, we had just 12 deals there yesterday, and that's some 
4.82 million naira worth of transactions that transpired in that side of the market yesterday. If we quickly look at the fixed income side of the market before both say hands over to the analyst, uh, we had a bit of uh, a very sentiment, fairly very sentiment on the bond side of the market, uh, a bit of cold shoulder uh, so for some of the securities there. Uh, for 2049 security in terms of the bond side of things, we saw yields uh, closing at 14.4%. Uh, and of course, that's a decline of 0.14%. Uh, we saw that it was priced at 102 Naira 99 Kobo as against 102 Naira 67 Kobo in the preceding uh, session. Total this was just 27 and of course 5.59 billion Naira worth of transactions there. For Treasury bill side of things, things are really bullish on that side of the market as average yields declined by 10 basis points. Both in. Tempo. Okay, so let's start. Chew MTN. Uh, listen, that was a few months ago. Now we have Airtel. We got a yellow listing. Then we got a red yesterday, which was Airtel. Then the market. Uh, uh, negative sentiment or bearish sentiment still uh, 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 remain. Uh, as you told us earlier, Tempo, those five key sectors remain in negative territory. So, uh, yes, uh, everybody loved Airtel listing, but again, the market sentiment still not so on the upside. Well, the thing is, uh, if we look at the... Uh a kind of uh, uh, anxiety that uh, came with MTN listing in, in May, May the 16th precisely, uh, that's quite different from what we have in terms of Airtel. I think because uh, MTN uh, is more of a local company, I suppose the fact that it has a parent uh, company, you know, in uh, South Africa, uh, everyone really has their eyes on MTN. Uh, again, the, the whole public was expecting it to do an IPO. And so there was much expectation on the IPO. Eventually, it didn't come by way of IPO. But when it came to the market by way of introduction, uh, everyone still thought that there would be an opportunity for them to buy into it at the secondary market. And so you had a lot of uh, rally around that uh, company when they got listed in May. Uh, but for Airtel at this point in time, it's not so clear if this, uh, the mode with which they came to the market will also help uh, the market to you know, enjoy some rally. Yesterday we saw a little bit of rally, just a bit over 100,000 units of shares were traded yesterday. It eventually gained some 10% uh, in the market. Uh, the free float, of course, has been explained to uh, the market, the trader community here, and they do hope that they will be able to participate in it. Again, it has a whole lot of uh, HNIs, institutional investors, some global investors also participating in it. So it's not so clear right now if investors will be able to uh, you know, drive off enough uh, petronage or performance, some, some rally rather around the uh, airtel. But uh, today is a new day, uh, it's Wednesday midweek, then that we will be able to see the reaction of investors uh, to airtel, uh, which of course has been able to push up. Mm -hmm. But we recognize the fact that airtel has actually uh, become the third largest uh, uh, company in the market right now by way of market capitalization, uh, coming after Dangote as number one, MTN as number two, and of course, uh, uh, Airtel at number three, uh, but if you put again the uh, valuations of these two companies, the two telcos together, that's MTN and Airtel in the market. MTN, of course, has uh, over 2.8 million trillion naira uh, in the system. You, in total, for Airtel and MTN, you have uh, a combination of 28.7 percent. That's what analysts have, uh, you know, uh, put out for us to, to choose, and of course, that's what it looks like. So. Uh, that's a, a large portion. Tells you that Telco uh, is also enjoying some kind of good uh, 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 quota in the entire market cap of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, Boston. Yes, th these companies are big. You need big ticket companies uh, uh, on the market. But, but again, what folks are still trying to understand at Temple is that there was so much hype, there was so much uh, hopes, as it were, uh, there was so much noise in the last two years or thereabout since the authorities, both the SEC and the NSC, uh, started chasing the telcos, the telco giants, uh, to come listing. Now we have two of them, accounting for uh, about a, uh, a very good size of our, of our equity cap. So uh, th that, that's, the, that's the story out there. But again, uh, now that they are here and, and they are listed, uh, the, the issue is that well, where do we go from here, really, as the, is the hype, the, the whole anxiety, as you put it, is it really worth it uh, right now at the moment? Yes, uh, the stock exchange, the SEC, uh, got their dissent 
uh, fees for, for bringing these companies to the market. So I'm sure their bank balances would have increased at least by some, some margins. So, but again, in terms of uh, the market itself, uh, the entire market still not as, as bullish as everyone will expect the, the, the hype and all of that uh, to bring those a very uh, high pitch fever into uh, the market in terms of volume, whatever, trading activities. Well, the point is uh, we have more companies, more stocks actually for investors to now, uh, you know, put their money on right now. I think that's uh, very, very important. Uh, the fact that you can buy, uh, uh, first of all, you even have uh, a sector now known as telecoms, a uh, subsector in the market. And of course, the stock exchange, I think, has created an indices for the telecom sector in the system. Uh, so you can track the performance. If you want to rebalance your portfolio, you have, you have more stocks now to actually put your money on. There will be news coming in on some of these companies. MTN will have its own peculiar news that will want to help drive up performance or drive up some, create some kind of wealth for investors and, of course, for traders in the market. Airtel will also have its own peculiar story. So if you're rebalancing portfolio and looking for something to actually put money on, it's an opportunity to the fact that we have these companies on ground. If eventually MTN is able to uh, do an initial public offering, uh, of course, investors will key into it. A lot of retail investors will key into it. And then they, that, that, of course, will create wealth for more people. If you look at the fact that Airtel has a lot of HNIs, uh, high net worth individuals, and of course institutional investors as the key uh, uh, subscribers, some uh, 39 million plus uh, units of that going to these HNIs and the institutional investors, it's a secondary market. You have retail investors who at some point in time, you know, want to have some, uh, some cool cash and grant, they can put it on it. Again, the fact that Airtel is listed, uh, is dual listed, are now on the London Stock Exchange, primarily on the London Stock Exchange, and secondly here in the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Uh, what uh, the leadership of the, you know, the, the management of the Nigerian Stock Exchange has uh, made us to understand is that you can actually, you know, move between the two markets. You only just need some kind of certificate of uh, capital importation to get that done. So if you want to move from London Stock Exchange down to the uh, Nigerian Stock Exchange, perhaps you've seen some hot money coming in and you want to be able to participate in it, just get your certificate of certificates of capital importation, and then you can come here and participate. And if you're tired of the secondary market, then you can go back to the London market. So it gives opportunity for a lot of investors, whether foreign or domestic, to be able to participate in the market here, both in. Okay, so uh, a final note as far as the Airtel was concerned. What did you hear yesterday from the Airtel officials during the listing? Was there any specific statement, anything of note that they said? I think the fact that uh, some 80 percent of their uh, 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 cash flow will be declared in dividends to investors is some is good news to for the ears of a lot of investors to so the ears of traders here, uh, which I think is one of the reasons why we saw a little bit of rally. They've committed to paying dividends. They've committed to uh, keeping to their promises. Uh, in the market, the fact that they will meet all uh, post-listing obligations and, of course, will be able to declare uh, uh, their, their numbers at as, as, as the appropriate time. I think uh, uh, March or thereabouts is their year end, and they will be able to, they will be declaring the numbers, you know, as when you and investors will be able to see all of this. The fact that they've made themselves known, uh, you know, made themselves a public company is something, again, that will um, continue to help them, you know, have some good price discovery. Uh, in the market, so uh, it, 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 it wasn't too much that was said yesterday uh, to the uh, broker dealer community. They just committed themselves to transparency, uh, corporate governance, which is something that is key for public companies and what traders here uh, in the market really want to see. Okay, Temple, a quick one. You're going to come back to us on the show uh, within the next uh, uh, couple of minutes uh, before the top of the hour. So let's talk about the quarterfinals between Nigeria and South Africa. And uh, then what are they hearing? Who are the stockbrokers of the market rooting for? I know, but then let's just get a sense of it. Oliver One is ready to play ball tonight, 8 p.m. local time. This is still Business Morning.